So first let's talk about the functions of triglycerides. So the, the first most important function of triglycerides are in energy storage. So we know that our triglycerides can store these fatty acids, um, which are very high energy sources. And since they are hydrophobic, we can pack them really tightly together. Um, and so that is the, uh, performed by the um, by adipocytes, which are gonna be storing lots and lots of triglycerides so that it's an energy source that is accessible when we need it. So in this picture, we're looking at some adipose tissue you. These big white open spaces are in fact not empty at all. They are full of triglycerides. So those are the lipid droplets within the adipocytes. And then some of the darker staining that we see over here, that's where we see some of the other organelles within the adipocytes, like the nucleus, for example. Another function of triglycerides are in heat production. And then triglycerides um, are, since they are filling up our adipocytes that, and our, we know that our adipose tissue is also really important for insulation, so keeping heat inside of our bodies, and also for cushioning our organs. So we do have some fat surrounding our organs and that helps cushion them so that when we're jostling around, our organs aren't actually bouncing around inside of our bodies. Let's talk about functions of phospholipids. So we are already familiar with the idea that our phospholipids are an amphipathic molecule and that they have a hydrophobic end and a hydrophilic end. And that means that we can make arrangements with them to kind of separate different um, parts of the body. So fo our phospholipids are really good at um, forming membranes to create barriers. So one example that we have, of course, are, is the phospholipid bilayer. That's what we make all of our cell membranes out of. And so here I'm, I'm showing you how the phospholipids would be arranged to make a phospholipid bilayer. They would have, so we bilayer, meaning we have two layers of phospholipids, um, but that the, uh, the hydrophilic heads would be oriented towards the inside of the cell, the cytoplasm, and the hydrophil uh, hydrophilic heads would, heads would also be oriented towards the outside, the watery interstitial environment of our body. And then the uh, fatty acid tails of these two layers would be sandwiched together. And so that is a way that we can separate a cell from the rest of the world. So that's a, an example of a phospholipid bilayer. Um, well, over here, I'm also showing you an example of a micelle. A micelle is just one layer of phospholipids. And so this micelle is gonna have its phospholipid heads facing towards the outside, the watery environment. And then it's gonna have its fatty acid tails facing towards the center. And we're gonna talk about micelles a little bit later today and because they are very important to help us digest and absorb uh, dietary fat. So that is a micelle, just one layer of phospholipids. And then another um, function of these phospholipids is that they can act as signaling molecules. So that's what I'm showing you over here. Um, we don't need to go into really the specific details of this signaling pathway, but what I would like you to, to notice is that over here we have some different complexes that are signaling, kind of forming this, uh, this domino cascade. Some of them are fatty acids. So for example, in this signaling cascade, we have two fatty acids that are attached to this PIP2 uh, protein. And when, the, when they get cleaved off, these two fatty acids then go on and initiate their own separate cascade um, of events. And so fatty, there are many different types of fatty acids that can function, um, uh, there are these phospholipids that can function in signaling cascades. And third, let's talk about the functions of cholesterol. So cholesterol by itself is a component of membranes. So we're already familiar with this idea that the phospho, that a bilayer of phospholipids makes up a membrane. And since we also know that these phospholipids, they have their fatty acid tails, they don't necessarily um, packed together very tightly. It's kind of this like woo, uh, watery membrane, very fluid membrane. Um, I kind of think of it like a water balloon. So it's kind of fluid. You could squish it and move it in different in different ways. Um, when we insert some cholesterol in between those uh, fatty acid tails within the membrane, that will help stiffen our membrane. And so there are some, we want to make sure that our membrane is of kind of that Goldilocks, not too stiff, not too fluid, just right. And so cholesterol can insert itself into membranes to help stiffen a, a membrane. Another function that um, cholesterol plays in membranes is as part of lipid rafts. Um, so this uh, lipid rafts are complexes of of cholesterol plus sometimes some other proteins, and they can actually zip around and move around within the, this fluid membrane. And they can also bring different components together so that they're in the right place um, for, for various cascades to take place. So what I'd like you to appreciate from that is just that the, the membrane is a very dynamic place and cholesterol is helping to manage the, the dynamic function within a membrane through 
lipid rafts. Okay, another important uh, function of cholesterol is because cholesterol is a precursor for bile acids. And we'll talk about bile acids in more detail later today when we're talking about um, digestion and absorption of dietary fat. But uh, cholesterol is a precursor for bile. And as a teaser, um, uh, excreting cholesterol as bile is the really the only way we can get rid of cholesterol from our body. And then the third function of cholesterol is that cholesterol is a precursor for steroid hormones. There are many different types of steroid hormones that we use in our body. Examples include vitamin D, cortisol, the sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. These are all um, hormones that are derived from cholesterol. And so these steroid hormones, they work a little bit differently in that they actually diffuse right into the nucleus of a cell and then will turn on gene expression within that cell. Um, but the more important factor here for us today is that cholesterol is a precursor for those steroid hormones.